BenQ, right? They make awesome monitors and great displays and everything else. So imagine my surprise when I got sent something to review from BenQ that's not a monitor and something not in a million years would I think was awesome, nor would I use. It's this, the BenQ Screen Bar Plus. All right, let's take a look at this thing. Currently, what I've done is I've mounted this screen bar on the top of my laptop right here. It works. It's a bit light in here already, but since I have this automatic sensing device, that tells me how bright it is and how it looks. Now, I like the ability to just pull this off and go with it wherever I want to. I can also use this light for other things, and uh, it works. It simply sits on top of my laptop, and I was very careful to make sure that this worked and it didn't mess up my laptop. Now I can certainly adjust the light by simply holding this and I can adjust where the light flows and where it hits. What I do like is I can adjust it here-ish, maybe a little more, and it's not really spilling over on my laptop. I'll show you again how to control this, but just a quick run through. I can set the, have it detect the ambient light. I can simply increase or decrease the brightness of this thing. I can play with the uh, color temp. We're running it down in the yellow range. Now we're running it back up into the high blue range, or I can just press it like that and have it determine the color balance and the brightness using this little guy. Let's go take a look at this thing and I'll show you how this works while I'm using it and the effect that it creates while I do things like turning off the lights. Now, just so you have some idea, this is what comes with the BenQ light. It's the bar, it's the cord, and the mount. Now, this is a 17-inch laptop, so you can get some sort of idea. The bar itself, there's the light panel, and there's the little tiny cord that you plug into there. That's it's there. This is the controller. This is the one that you press up and down, dim it, uh, take auto sensing, uh, this side plugs into the back of that. This plugs into your monitor if you have an extra USB or a USB uh, charging port. You could even put like an iPhone charger on that. Um, you know, those little white things you stick in the wall. You could plug it directly into your computer. However you want to charge this, it's fine. It has a little draw. And then what happens is you plug this guy simply onto here. It just fits into there very nicely and it's in there. Now you can see that it's in there and it has that tilt and it's locked. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, wow, I should probably take this plasticky stuff off that I haven't got off yet. That's how that moves up and down. So you simply plug this into here, uh, roll out the cord, plug the USB into the thing, and then you control your light like that. It's fairly simple. And again, you have this light bar like that, and then you can adjust it. And it's really nice because it really concentrates the light over a really small span. Oh, there we go. I was wondering why they would make that all shiny. Um, boy, that looks so much better. Now this part right here, let me just take this part out of here just cocks out like that. This part right here, this whole arm pivots up, looks like a, feels like a spring mechanism, and it just captures on the, like this, on the top of your laptop or your monitor, and then the little weight keeps it on there, which is nice, because you can just pull this thing off when you need it, and you're done. Now I will caution you on one thing, there are very few monitors um, for instance, my large, it's like a 33 or 4 or 6 inch curved monitor, and it's an Alienware monitor. Well, it's got all sorts of bling in it, like the monitor goes back and over and back. And this actually won't fit on it. I could probably lie it on there, but it won't fit on that monitor. It's a real unusual monitor. Um, if you got a monitor that is, that looks like well over an inch thick, it's going to fit on there. Mine is more like two inches because it top of the monitor back looks like this. 
with the thing down here. It's just an unusual monitor. So you might want to check that if you're going to buy this and stick it on your Alienware 36 inch curved monitor with the back thing and all the lights. Uh, you might want to reconsider, but I don't want it over there. I want it on this computer. Now this thing could be dimmed down pretty light and this thing can be brought up pretty high and it still doesn't affect my screen. I'm going to be showing you over here what this thing looks like over here while I show you a view of this thing while I'm controlling it. But just so you get the idea, when I say in the next part that I'm turning off the lights and it's really dark in here, I want to show you the front view and show you exactly what happens when I do turn off the lights. Let's pull off that light. Let's pull off that light. And let's pull off that light. So you can see it is pretty darn dark and all I'm getting is just a tiny bit of light here on the uh, myself here. But look at the keyboard. It's lit. I can see it. I can go over here and adjust the color value that I want. Or I can just hit here, let it determine what that is, go back to the brightness, and I can dial in what I want. I think for editing this is great, and as I said earlier, this has really helped any eye strain from me editing. Let's go look at this, and let's go look at this controller at the same time, and you can see what I mean. Very small, and let's just take a look at this. The way it's constructed is it has a taper on it, so you can see what's going on here. It's pretty simple. Let's just turn that off. Now, when I turn this button, that simply turns it on. And it remembers where it was. So if I turn the brightness up, and I turn the button off, back on, it remembers that it was set to that dimness. Now, this button over here is used to set the color temperature. You press that. Notice that the light went from the dimmer over to the color temperature. I can move that all the way up to high, which is blue. I can also move this way down to that yellow cast. Pressing the button again moves it over to the dimmer. Now let's put it right about there. When I turn the button off and I turn the button back on, it remembers the state of the dimness and it remembers the state of the color temperature. Now this button over here is really interesting. What this does is it senses the room light and it senses the general color temperature of what's going on in the room. When you press it, it will automatically adjust the light to the room. So let's just press it. So now it went through, it sampled the room using this little sensor here. Right now I have all the lights on and that's what it's sensing. Again, it remembers its state. If I turn the light off and I turn the light back on, it goes out and senses again and sees what it should be as far as the color temperature and as far as the brightness for the particular room you're in. Now, at first I thought, well, let me try and trick it. Now I'd cover the sensor and nothing would happen. And I'd be like, well, that's weird. And then of course, this totally made sense to me. I mean, if this was constantly sensing things and the lights were going on and off or something was changing, the light would be changing all the time. So this is actually brilliant the way they've done it. If I turn all the lights off in the room, let me turn off a couple lights here. That one. And that one, it hasn't changed anything due to the current room and the way it looks. I'm practically in the dark here, but if I hit the button, it will sense it again. And then it comes on brighter. It, it's brilliant the way this thing is really designed for that. And I really like it. I like being able to, I start adjusting. You watch this light here. Once I start adjusting the light, over here, which is on will, there it goes. So now you're in full control of this thing. You can dim it to whatever you want. Again, you can go over here, press this button, set your color temperature, or you can just press the button again and let it do its thing. I kind of like that. The way I have it hooked up is I have this hooked up to the light on the one end, 
And then I have the other end actually hooked into my second monitor. So when I start my computer, this thing comes on when I start my computer. Now I could definitely take this with me, for instance, on an airplane and just slap it onto my laptop over here um, or even on the side of the chair. And the nice thing about that is when I'm sitting there on a plane and instead of using those overhead lights that they have up top, I can just use this thing. It lights up my keyboard really nicely and does everything it's supposed to do, yet it's not going to bother other people. Now, this isn't going to be perfect, but I wanted to give you some idea of what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the computer. Currently, the lights that I use to film are on, so I have a key and a fill light over on the left and right. Now, and a little blue light is on in the back. And here I am in a video editor looking at this. Now all the lights are on and that's okay, but let's just play with this. Here's bright up, here's bright down. Now I'm going to play with the color balance on the BenQ. Going yellow, going bright. Now I'm going to play with the automatic white balance and brightness. Press the button, it figures it out and it thinks it's there. Now let's turn off the lights in here and see what that looks like and see what this does. Okay, now as I've shown you, I am almost pretty much completely in the dark. Uh, as you can see behind there, all you see is a few buttons and things from my A10 Mini Pro. Now again, I can automatically adjust the white balance, high, yellow. I can also switch back to the brightness, up that, or lower it. Or I can let it use what it thinks is the best. And there it is. Now, to me, that looks really, really good. The white balance on the camera may be off a little bit, but when I'm sitting here looking at this with all the lights off, I actually found after weeks of trying to do this that my eye strain was so much less, which I would have thought the other way. I would have thought with the lights off and with this shooting into my eyeballs, that it would be more strain than having other lights on. So I can just sit here and uh, edit away and just be really happy about that. So there you go. Like I said, I never thought in a million years that I would ever buy one of these, look at one of these or review these, but the thing is awesome. As I've shown, you can do a whole lot with it. It really helps me out when I'm editing and in other ways too, given its caveats. For just around a hundred bucks, now that I know and have the thing, I would actually go buy the thing. Links are in the description below this video. And don't forget, free assets, sound effects, courses like my live streaming course are over at Basic Filmmaker University. Go get them now. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. In this video, I want to cover the BenQ Screen Plus thing that... is upside down. Okay, take two.